I recently started watching The Bachelor because a friend of mine would not shut up about it and I got curious as to what all the fuss was about. Uh, if you are already familiar with The Bachelor and the general plot of it, then you can go to this timestamp to skip me talking about what it is, unless you of course want to appreciate my hard work, effort and tears. You're welcome. The Bachelor is a reality TV show about one tall blonde white man nicknamed The Bachelor who is supposed to find this one true love among 40 different women who live in the same mansion together. Each episode The Bachelor removes a few of the women he feels he doesn't have a connection with from the house until he is left with only one contestant, and that is his wife-to-be. I have currently watched 5 episodes of season 24 with Peter Webber, uh, aka uh, Spider-Man, because pizza, as in Peter Parker and Webber as in shoots webs. I'm a genius. Anyways, uh, something that has fascinated me about the show so far is a certain um, pattern I've started to pick up on. It's not fair because I know how it feels to not have any time. I got the least amount of time out of everybody. It was really frustrating. I was going to share that moment with him. I definitely want to get more time with him, so... And, like, not getting that time with him. I feel like I needed time with him tonight, and I didn't get it. Everybody wants time with him, so... Seven of us tonight that didn't get time with him. Like, I just, like, keep getting interrupted by people that have had the most time. <laughs> time with him. Time with Peter. Time with Peter. Time with him today. Time with Peter. There seems to be a sort of consensus amongst the girls that all the girls have a sort of privileged right to an equal amount of time with The Bachelor, and that it would be fair if everyone respected each other's privacy with The Bachelor. And if someone suddenly doesn't follow this unwritten rule, drama arises, and that is where a lot of the show's content comes from. In this video, I will show you why it's not clever to follow this unwritten rule, and why it is in fact better for everyone if they all just go for him 100% of the time with complete disregard to the others. But first, we're going to have to dip our heads into some game theory. No, not that game theory. An actual real mathematical genre called game theory. Game theory is a mathematical genre all about solving different types of game problems and finding out what is the best thing to do in those hypothetical game scenarios. Uh, one famous problem you might have heard of is the Monty Hall problem, where you are given three doors and have to choose which one to open, based on which door the show host opens. But I'm not here to talk about the Monty Hall problem, I'm here to talk about the Prisoner's Dilemma, another famous problem. Uh, and there are many ways of portraying the Prisoner's Dilemma, so if you already know what it is and have a different version of it, please don't kill me for our versions being different, they, they all work basically the same. You and your friend have just been arrested for a minor crime each. You are separately arrested and you are now sitting at the police station and can expect to get about one year for your crimes. However, the police is expecting that the two of you have cooperated on the bank robbery a few weeks ago, but they don't have any hard working evidence to prove it. They are trying to get you both to squeal on the other person. You are now at the police station sitting in two different interrogation rooms so you can't communicate to each other. The police tell you there are four different outcomes to this situation. If you both squeal on the other one, you're both going to prison for eight years. Not ideal. If both of you stay silent, neither of you squeal on the other person, you only get one year in prison because of the smaller crime. However, if one of you squeals on the other, but the other one stays silent, the one who squeals gets to go free, while the other one has to serve 10 years in prison. So, then the question arises, what's the best thing to do here? I mean, looking at the payoff matrix, as this type of grid is called, it looks like staying silent is the best thing for both of you to do. But if we look at this from a player's perspective, we see that that might not be the case after all. So let's take this from your perspective. Say you don't know this partner very well at all, they could go for either squeal or silent, you don't really know, there's a 50-50 chance. Let's say they go for squeal. Well, the best option for you is to also squeal, because getting 8 years in prison is better than getting 10 years in prison. Let's say they go silent. Well, the best option for you is to squeal again, because going free is better than getting 1 year in prison. No matter what your partner does, the best thing for you to do 
is to squeal. And so goes for your partner. You, you are both getting 8 years in prison when you could only get 1 year in prison because neither of you can trust the other person to stay silent. In fact, here we have something called a Nash's Equilibrium. Nash's Equilibrium is a word we use to describe the specific outcome of a game theory problem where changing your strategy is not going to benefit you at all, assuming the other players keep their own strategy. And only one of these four outcomes is classified as a Nash's Equilibrium. If both of you stay silent, you can gain an advantage by changing your strategy to squealing by going and going free. If you stay silent but they squeal, you can change your strategy from silent to squeal and getting 8 years instead of 10 years. But if you both, both squeal on each other and get, get 8 years, neither of you will gain anything from squealing on the other person. You are trapped in getting 8 years in prison no matter what you do in this Nash's equilibrium. Now, I know what you're thinking. Mr. Bowtie, that was really boring. Like, really fucking boring. What does any of this have to do with The Bachelor, the reason I clicked on this video in the first place? Well, dear Bachelor fan, uh, I was almost boring myself. So, luckily, this is where the fun part begins. Because we can apply the prisoner's dilemma to The Bachelor. You are a young and kind of naive woman applying for The Bachelor in the hopes of finding true happiness with Spider-Man and get a lot of Instagram followers. And would you look at that, you're in, you're there, you, 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 you succeeded, you're in, you're, you're in The Bachelor, you are one of the contestants. Oh, and it's now the first episode of The Bachelor on the first night and you now have two choices. You can A, act really aggressively. You can go for pizza all the time, take all the time you can with him, take every opportunity to be with him with complete disregard for the others, even if it isn't technically your turn yet. Or you can B, act passively, let the other women have some time with him as well so that he will judge everyone fairly, equal opportunity for everyone. Yay. I have once again made a payoff matrix to illustrate this point. Here on top are you, with your choices of being aggressive and passive. On this side is everyone else, all the other 39 women that live in this house with you and share the same goal as you with just as much ambition as you. Good luck. They also have a choice between being passive and being aggressive. So let's see what each of the outcomes are. If everyone decides to act passively and everyone follows the unwritten rule, well then everyone wins. Spider-Man gets a fair impression of everyone, decides who he likes best, and everyone completely understand and respect this, and move on, and no drama whatsoever. Wishful thinking. None, if, if any one of the women decide to act aggressively, but you stay passively, they are going to get an advantage over you, and we don't want that. We want to have the advantage, or for everyone to be judged fairly. So, then... What happens is if everyone acts aggressively? Well, I don't know, but my best guess would be that a show descends into complete and utter chaos. But in the end, I think that the person who acts the most aggressively is going to win. The, the most aggressive person wins, as opposed to the best suited person for The Bachelor, like in uh, the passive, passive scenario. Once again, we have a Nash's equilibrium here, and it is by far not the best option. Let's take it from your perspective. If everyone else acts passively, then you will get an advantage over them by acting aggressively. If everyone else, or at least a few people, act aggressively, then they are going to have an advantage over you if you act passively. So you should act aggressively as well to compete on the same level as them. Our Nash's equilibrium is the option of complete and utter chaos. And isn't that just beautiful? <laughs> this is why I always think it's funny whenever one of the contestants bitch about the other contestants stealing time with Peter. They are literally just playing by the rules of the game. They're doing what's mathematically best for them. And so should you. You're not there to make friends and long-lasting friendships. You're there to make love. What do you mean? You're there to make Instagram followers? Okay. 
You're there to find a partner and settle down. You sure? <laughs> Alright. And, and find a partner and settle down and also play a little game of, well, of game theory. So, yeah. This didn't really have any further purpose. It was just a thought I had in the shower one day and I thought it might make for a good video. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. I don't think I'll be watching any more of The Bachelor or make any more content around The Bachelor because, no offence, the show was, on a scale from 1 to 5, mediocrely shit. So if you're thinking of subscribing because I talk about The Bachelor, don't! I will never talk about The Bachelor on this channel ever again. And the element of the month is polonium. Polonium is the 84th element on the periodic table. Named after Marie Curie's homeland of Poland, polonium is very radioactive, has snow-stable isotopes and is mostly used to extract alpha particles and neutrons for scientists to use in experiments. Don't forget to vote for your favourite element in the no longer monthly element contest down in the comments section. Who knows, maybe your favourite element will be the next element of the month. There's actually a really simple solution to the whole bachelor's dilemma. If Spider-Man just got his shit together and started actually caring about the drama that goes on between the girls in the mansion and actually stopped rewarding bad behaviour and stopped following, just following his heart like he did with the whole Alea situation, actually started listening to the girls, he could set up a sort of a, a system or something or a, a list or a, anything to make sure that everyone gets an equal amount of time with him to make everything fair, because morally we want everything to be fair. But he he doesn't, and I don't understand why, because he, he keeps on saying that he he wants an honest girl, but then he, then he rewards them for cheating, like the whole Kelly in the airplane situation in episode one, where she like cheated her way to a date with him, and he, he was just okay with it. and. It's like he says he cares, he says he wants an honest girlfriend, but he doesn't show it, and oh my god, it's making me flip my shit.